In this presentation, I will demonstrate the SOLIDWORKS Associative Interface for Abacus. Before I begin the demonstration, however, I would like to introduce you to Simulia, the Dassault Systems brand that focuses on realistic simulation. While simulation is an important and useful process, in many companies it has been somewhat peripheral and performed by a small team of experts that may be disconnected from the main product development process. Our vision is to change this so that simulation becomes an integral business practice focused on producing better designs more quickly and more cost-effectively. Today, we are the technology leader in structural simulation. We are building on this leadership with the goal of becoming the leading provider of simulation technology, as well as technology for simulation lifecycle management for both engineering and scientific simulation. Product developers are constantly pushing to add more realism in their designs and simulations as a way of reducing physical prototyping time and costs. They are seeking solutions that allow them to combine multiple physics, simulate complex impact and crush scenarios, and simulate metal, glass, or plastic forming. They are developing new materials that need to be analyzed for damage and failure, such as advanced composites. And the list goes on. Simulia's realistic simulation solutions are widely applied across many industries. As you can see, we are used in nearly all industries, such as aerospace and defense, architecture and construction, automotive and transportation, consumer packaged goods, energy, high-tech, industrial equipment, life sciences, and turbo machinery. Abacus FEA software has a 30-year history of being the technology leader in finite element analysis. It offers the most comprehensive analysis capabilities available. It provides both linear and nonlinear analysis of components, assemblies, and mechanisms. Complex contact between multiple components is easily modeled and new features are available for simulating a range of fracture and failure criteria. The actual nonlinear behavior of materials, such as metals, plastics, rubbers, and composites, can be represented, including plasticity and failure. The high-performance solvers in Abacus also facilitate realistic simulation by allowing the rapid solution of very complex models. Abacus can utilize compute clusters. This large transmission model from Dana solves in just four hours using 128 cores, compared with over three days if only four cores are used. These solutions are highly complementary to SOLIDWORKS simulation software. Use SOLIDWORKS simulation for integrated design analysis and Abacus FEA for specific challenging industrial applications. The SOLIDWORKS Associative Interface for Abacus allows you to quickly export assemblies and subsequent design modifications from SOLIDWORKS into Abacus CAE. In this demonstration of the Associative Interface, I will simulate the expansion of a cardiovascular stent into an artery. The stent is made of a material called nitinol. Nitinol is a complex superelastic material whose properties make it an attractive material for medical devices. Because it is a difficult material to process, simulation can be a particularly valuable and time-saving step in the design process. By taking advantage of symmetry, I can model a portion of the assembly in Apicus, and the results will be the same as if the entire stent were analyzed. Some of the modeling challenges associated with modeling stents and other medical devices include large deformations, contact between flexible bodies, and complex behavior of materials, both the biological materials 
and materials such as nitinol that are used to create medical devices. Here I have Abacus CAE and SOLIDWORKS running simultaneously. In SOLIDWORKS you can see that I have already cut the geometry so that the assembly only includes the portion of the stent, the artery, and the balloon that I will be analyzing with Abacus. In Abacus CAE, I will activate the CAD interface that will enable Abacus CAE and SOLIDWORKS to communicate. Now that the CAD connection is enabled, I will switch back to SOLIDWORKS and export the stent assembly to Abacus CAE. The Abacus menu I used to perform the export was created by a SOLIDWORKS add-in, which is available for download from the Simulia website. After the export, the association between the stent assembly in Apicus CAE and the stent assembly in SOLIDWORKS will be maintained so that design modifications can be made in SOLIDWORKS and exported into Apicus without losing analysis features associated with the assembly in Apicus CAE. Now, I will mesh the stent part in Apicus CAE. I will begin by assigning mesh seeds which will control the size of the elements generated for the part. Then I will mesh the part with brick elements. Brick elements, also known as hexahedral or hex elements, are the best element choice for this problem because they provide the best solution in the shortest amount of computer time. Generating brick element meshes can be challenging. However, the mesh generation technology included in Apicus CAE can create high quality brick meshes even on relatively complex geometries such as this one with little or no user intervention. I will open the element type dialog box so you can get an idea of how rich the Apicus element library is. While the default element formulation is appropriate for many structural applications, element options can be modified when necessary to solve a wide variety of challenging problems. As I scroll down the element family list, you can see the various specialized element types available in Apicus, including some for solving non-structural applications such as heat transfer and thermal electrical analysis. Next, I will associate the stent geometry with a predefined material from Nitinol. I will open Nitinol in the Material Editor, which provides access to the vast material library in Apicus. The constitutive models range from simple linear elastic behavior to complex, highly nonlinear behavior, such as that of Nitinol and the arterial tissues simulated in this example. Next, I will modify the balloon part. The focus of this analysis is the behavior of the stent and artery, so I will convert the balloon into a single shell surface that will contact the stent. More detailed modeling of the balloon could be added for future analyses. Rather than show you all of the operations required to create the stent model, I will now switch to a version of the model which I have completed in advance. Here is the assembly, and you can see that all the parts are now meshed. The analysis is split up into two steps. In the first step, an internal pressure is applied to the artery, as indicated by these pink arrows. Axial tension is also applied to the end of the modeled artery segment. In the second step of the analysis, a boundary condition is used to expand the balloon in the radial direction, as shown by these orange arrows. Next, I will highlight the contact interactions, one of which models contact between the balloon and the stent, the other of which models contact between the stent and the artery. Abacus contains a powerful set of options for modeling contact effectively in a wide variety of applications. In this example, both contact interactions include friction. Now that you have seen the primary features of the model, 
Let's take a look at the results. I will modify some display settings so we can visualize the entire stent, not just the portion modeled. When I animate the results, we can see the stent expand into the artery wall. Next, we will take a look at the stresses in the stent. I will remove the artery from the display and deactivate translucency so that we can clearly see the stress contours on the stent. I will zoom in on this connection region, which is an area of high stress when the stent is expanded. A proposed design change for this stent, which we will investigate, is to widen this connection so that we can return to this contour plot later, I will continue working with a new Abacus CAE viewport. Here is the model with the narrow connections between the loops of the stent. I will now switch back to SOLIDWORKS. In SOLIDWORKS, here is the sketch that includes the dimension for the connection that I will be modifying. I will edit the sketch and double the width of the connection. Once SOLIDWORKS rebuilds the assembly, we can see that the connections between the loops of the stent are now twice as wide as those of the stent we analyzed originally. Now I will re-export the assembly into Abacus. The associative import functionality will update the assembly in Abacus CAE with the new stent geometry. All the analysis features I defined on the stent are maintained after the design modification. I ran this analysis in advance so we can examine the results of the design modification. As before, I will remove the artery from the display and contour stresses on the stent. I will arrange the two viewports so that we can see the results of the original analysis in the upper viewport and the results of the new analysis in the lower viewport. With the viewports linked, I can synchronize the view of both viewports and zoom in on the region of the design change. Now we can see that increasing the width of the connection between the stent loops does not have a significant effect on the stress around the connection. If anything, the stresses in this region are slightly higher after the design modification. I hope you now have a better understanding of how you can use Abacus to perform complex nonlinear analyses on SOLIDWORKS assemblies.